the opportunity to give a talk here. Uh, so what I should what I should also say um, is that uh, my own work, which I'm going to talk about, is uh, pretty much it's still still kind of work in progress. So the purpose of my talk today will be twofold. So I'm going to present the overall idea, which is expected to work, uh, modular some technicalities, and also give a sort of a general survey of um, foliation theory and uh, its connections to birational geometry. Uh, so let me start first uh, with something that uh, is more complex analytic in nature. So the motivation comes from a theory of Kobayashi hyperbolicity. We're going to work with um, smooth, uh, unless uh, explicitly mentioned otherwise, projective varieties over the complex numbers. Uh, and we would like to study so-called entire curves, uh, which are uh, non-constant holomorphic maps uh, from the complex line to x. Um, so there is a whole bunch of conjectures uh, made uh, by first Kobayashi, then Green Griffiths, Lang, and other people um, uh, that the so the overall philosophy is that the value distribution of these entire curves in a projective variety should be uh, somehow controlled by birational geometry of x. So the most famous conjecture that I would like to mention is the one by Green Griffiths and Lang, and it says that if we have a complex variety of general type, then all the images of entire curves in X are contained in some fixed proper subvariety, uh, which can be also phrased in the way that, uh, well, it's Kobayashi hyperbolic modular some proper subset. So a, a, a projective variety is called Kobayashi hyperbolic if there are no such curves. Uh, for example, say if the cotangent bundle is ample, um, if you take a complete intersection of sufficiently many, sufficiently ample hypersurfaces, then it will be the case. Um, so this conjecture is um, so we don't, don't have any clue how to do in higher dimensions. Uh, the best uh, known, uh, maybe not quite the best, but um, the result that is known for sure is um, the theorem of Bogomolov and McQuillan, uh, which asserts that uh, for complex surfaces uh, of general type having sufficiently many holomorphic symmetric differentials, uh, the green griffiths lang conjecture holds. So let me just uh, briefly uh, sketch the idea of the proof. Uh, we consider a diagram like this. We have our map uh, to a surface. Uh, we take the projectivization of the tangent bundle, and we can lift um, this map holomorphically via the first derivative. Then uh, what is given is that um, uh, the line bundle O of 1 is big, and therefore there exists a holomorphic symmetric differential uh, vanishing on an ample divisor. So the section of O of m uh, twisted by O of minus a for a ample. Then we need to do some intersection theory, uh, which I'm probably going to, to mention further. Uh, can I just ask you, so your, P, yeah. your projective thing is of lines, not of, of lines, lines. yes. So it's, it's more convenient because uh, so we lift a tangent vector mm -hmm. and we get a point. Um, so by some intersection theory, uh, we can show that the image of the lifted entire curve is contained in the zero divisor. So P of Tx is a threefold, uh, but the lifted curve is not the risky dense. It's contained in some uh, surface, and now we uh, we assume, uh, to obtain a contradiction, we assume that f of c is a risky dense in x. And uh, so uh, the most difficult case, uh, the one that we really need to consider, is, is when uh, surface z dominates x. So if it maps dominantly, it has also to be a surface of general type. and. Uh, 
uh, so we have um, mm, the sur uh, surface of general type upstairs, um, which dominates X. And uh, we assume that the, the lifted entire curve is a risky dense in Z. So if it's not the risky dense, then uh, basically we conclude by Bogomolov's theorem. Um, so Bogomolov first proved that um, there are only finitely many rational and elliptic curves uh, it, um, for the surface um, under these assumptions. Uh, but what is new on Z is that um, now our lifted entire curve is tangent to a tautological foliation on Z. Uh, so we have uh, uh, at each point um, we have the sub-bundle in the tangent bundle of uh, PF PFTX. We have a sub-bundle of all directions which can be realized by lifting um, tangent vectors from downstairs. And we intersect uh, this uh, um, sub-bundle with the T of Z and uh, by saturating we obtain uh, this foliation. So <coughs> Uh, so the bottom line is that um, the whole problem um, about um, entire curves on such surfaces reduces to a statement uh, in, of foliation theory. So what McQuillan proved in 1998 was that um, if we assume additionally that um, there is a foliation directing uh, this entire curve, then the entire curve has to be algebraically degenerate. So it's mm, not the risky dense. It's contained in, in, a, in a rational or elliptic curve. And then we conclude by Bogomolov. Um, also, we can uh, look at um, uh, foliated varieties um, for their own sake. I mean, uh, so by using foliation theory, we can sort of establish hyperbolicity of X uh, but uh, maybe not in all directions, but precisely in those uh, prescribed by the foliation. So let me give a brief reminder on foliation theory for those who are uh, maybe not familiar with this. So foliation on um, normal pr projector variety X is a coherent subsheaf in the uh, tangent uh, sheaf that, um, that is, well, R is the rank of F, uh, which satisfies two additional conditions. First of all, it's saturated. That means uh, the quotient is torsion-free. And uh, it's also integrable. So it's closed under Lie bracket. I mean, uh, around each point where um, F is a sub-bundle of Tx, we can just uh, take a local holomorphic vector field uh, tangent to the foliation and take its, uh, their commutator. Uh, so also, foliations um, can be given as certain twisted Q forms. So we have an um, exact sequence, the normal exact sequence, and uh, taking the top wedge power, we get the, that the, um, the determinant of the normal maps to omega Q of X. So, and therefore, we get a section, such twisted Q form, uh, which is also satisfied to the local conditions which is locally decomposable and integrable. And vice versa, every such form gives us a foliation just as a kernel of, um, of contraction with this form. For foliation, we, we can uh, just pretty much in the same way as for variety, we can define the canonical class. It is defined, well, generally speaking, up to linear equivalence. We take any well divisor. Uh, such that the associated re reflexive sheaf of rank 1 is isomorphic to the reflexive hull of the top wedge power of F dual. And we have uh, the adjunction formula for the foliation. Uh, well, so also, um, what we can do to make, our, uh, to make the problem somehow easier is to consider a more restrictive condition. So suppose you have a variety which admits, um, uh, say, some entire curve. But it also can, um, a stronger condition is uh, that uh, to admit um, a holomorphic map from C to the K, where K is, uh, can range from 1 to the dimension of X. 
so general expectation is that um, these maps for k more than one uh, are expected to be somehow easier to handle. Uh, for example, in the extreme case uh, where k is equal to the dimension, uh, there is a well-known theorem by Kobayashi and Ochai uh, from 1975, which says that um, if we have a variety of general type and it admits um, some meromorphic map, some non-degenerate, differentially non-degenerate meromorphic map from C to the N uh, to X, then the, this map has to be degenerate. So its image is also not the risky dense. It is also con um, somehow connected um, to the problem, well, uh, how to describe uh, complex projective varieties which are dominable by C to the N. Uh, so at least what we know is that um, they are not of general type. And also, um, so we can, in fact, we can prove something stronger, but even um, for some varieties which are well, completely opposite to the general type, um, such, such as um, for Fano variety or for some Calabi Yals. Uh, so the question of dominability seems to be very hard and is unresolved. For example, for a Fano threefold, uh, well, uh, basically, um, if it is unirational, th then it's of course dominable, but proven dominability uh, without knowing unirationality uh, seems to be mysterious. Do you think it's possible to have example in any Kodaira dimension? Uh, in which Kodaira dimension? Except the general type. I mean. In every Kodaira dimension? That's a good question. So, um, mm, so what we can prove is, uh, is that uh, a variety admitting such a map is in fact uh, so-called special uh, in the sense that Campana introduced. But uh, in principle, uh, I mean, special varieties mm, can be of, um, of any Kodaro dimension um, uh, up to the n minus 1. But to give such an example... Uh, doesn't he conjecture that they have at most zero Kodaro dimensions? Uh, no, he didn't. No? In fact, uh, they do exist in oh. every Kodaro dimension except the maximal. Okay. Um, uh, but to your question, uh, I don't know an example, and it's in fact a good question. Um, yeah. So maybe there are maybe there are some. And do you think K3 surfaces are dominable? Uh, well, for surfaces, uh, there is a paper by Buzzard and Lou from 2000. Um, so they, uh, what they did, I guess, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they have proved uh, for all. Uh, that all special surfaces except, uh, are dominable except perhaps uh, those K3s which are not Coomer or elliptic. So they expect. Sorry? Which are not. Not Coomer or elliptic. So for Coomer and elliptic, it's, for Coomer it's easy, for elliptic it's also but doable. The uh, uh, obviously, yeah. But K K3 surfaces are expected to be dominable. Uh, the problem is that, uh, I mean, you can approximate any K3 surface by um, something dominable, but um, this condition behaves badly in families, so. And what's the idea of doing uh, Kobayashi uh, well, um, well, some integral calculus from value distribution theory, basically, yeah. So, so you get a, you take a volume form and then you integrate and then compute certain invariants. Well, so let me formulate uh, the main problem. Um, so let us just uh, move downwards um, to k equals minus n minus 1. Um, so this, uh, this case uh, of maps from um, uh, C to the n minus 1 um, is especially interesting in connection with foliation theory because uh, foliation, uh, foliations of co-dimension 1 are um, pretty well known, so we know a lot about them. 
as opposed to for the agents of general rank. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, we can uh, formulate uh, pretty much the Green Griffiths Lang conjecture in the foliated setting. Uh, so we expect to, uh, to be able to control um, algebraic degeneracy of these maps, uh, which are tangent to the foliation, by positivity of KF. So that's one way to state the problem. On the other hand, we can also uh, suppose that the variety itself is of general type. Uh, and we, we do not assume anything about the foliation, uh, about the canonical of the foliation. Um, and we can ask if, if there exists such a map. Uh, such maps. So they, of course, um, are expected not to exist uh, because, uh, I mean, for relative general type. Sorry, what's algebraically degenerate? Algebraically degenerate means uh, not the risky dense. Oh, okay. So it's contained in a proper okay, okay. subvariety. So, in fact, um, both conjectures are known uh, on surfaces. This is uh, the work of McWillan. Um, so, yeah, so uh, the first one, uh, yeah, so the foliated uh, Green Griffin Slang conjecture is just uh, is McQuillan's topological inequality that prevents uh, KF in that case to be big. Uh, and to do conjecture two surfaces, um, you can argue in different ways, uh, but uh, it turns out that. Uh, there is only one uh, example of uh, uh, non-algebraically integrable of transcendental foliation on surface, uh, which is not of general type. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the Hilbert modular case. Uh, so we're interested uh, in, uh, in the case of three faults. And there are some uh, known results. Um, so in, in the trifold case, uh, we can generalize um, McQuillan's techniques and to prove, uh, uh, to prove conjecture one. So the theorem by Gisbari, Pacienza, and Russo uh, from 2013 is that, um, so the, if, the if we have a foliation with canonical singularities, so uh, the question of singularities of the foliation, uh, so I will come back to, to it later, but we have to really have to require this um, additional condition. So we have foliation with canonical singularities and KF big, then such maps uh, algebraically degenerate. So what, what we would like to do is, of course, to approach conjecture two by um, <coughs> elaborating on uh, on this result, so uh, the main result, which is uh, still being written down, is um, that uh, the threefold X is actually not, not of general type as well. Uh, so let me give um, so how the plan of the proof. Uh, so it's, it's go it goes by contradiction. So let us assume that. We have a threefold of general type and uh, some co dimension one foliation on this threefold. And, uh, um, and we assume that there is a, uh, a map with a risky dense image from C2. So we would like to derive a contradiction, derive a contradiction and uh, to do that, we proceed by induction on the Picard rank of X. So let us, uh, just an easy uh, remark is that by junction formula, if we ha have that um, KF is not big and KX is big, uh, then, uh, uh, then the normal bundle uh, is not pseudo-effective. Simply because pseudo-effective plus big uh, is also big. And so, in the case where X has Picard rank one, so this, this case is ruled out very easily. So, I mean, uh, the normal shift has to be, if it is not pseudo-effective, it has to be ample. Uh, 
but for pseudo-effective uh, pseudo effective canonical bundle, uh, there is a very strong control over its positivity. Um, so the vanishing theorem uh, of bogomolov Semeza says that if you have a mildly singular variety and uh, there is non-trivial morphism from a line bundle to the bundle of holomorphic P forms, then the quadratic dimension of L is bounded above by P. Well, to proceed with the induction. Uh, so your L was the dual of the. Uh, sorry? So your, your L was the, uh, the, the normal. The normal, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it's, it's a line bundle. Mm -hmm. So in order to pr proceed with the induction, um, I have to introduce certain, uh, some more definitions from the foliation theory. So uh, if you have a co-dimension one foliation, uh, so it's basically a foliation by um, somehow transcendental analytic divisors, so, so sub-varieties of co-dimension one. Uh, so if you have a, an irreducible hypersurface, uh, it, it's uh, called invariant if it is a, the closure of, of a leaf of X. So the leaf is the, the maximal sub-variety such that F restricts to the tangent shift of the sub-variety. So the invariant hypersurface is just an algebraic leaf and uh, a quasi-invariant hybrid surface is the one that is uh, transverse to the foliation. Uh, so it's not tangent. Uh, and in case where a sub-variety is not tangent to the foliation, so it's not contained in the leaf, uh, we can uh, restrict the foliation uh, to the sub-variety. Just, um, for example, take this, uh, the associated twisted form uh, and restrict. Uh, so then uh, uh, there, is a, there is an induced foliation on, on this uh, hypersurface. And um, oh, sorry, I, I said algebraic curves. Uh, no, it's, it's a foliation uh, still of co-dimension one. So I mean, um, if we're on a tree fold and we have a surface, then it's a foliation of algebraic curves. So I'm somehow, for general dimension, it's a co-dimension one foliation. Can I just ask you, can you draw a picture of the quasi-covariant hypersurface? Um, so I mean, on this, on the same, on just the foliation, and then what would be the, the, the is it just, a, just a transfer, just the orthogonal to the, 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 the leaves? Uh, well, uh, how to put it, so we can, so somehow, if you have this surface, and if it is not contained, uh, so if it is not contained in the leaf, you, you take a point, and through that point, you uh, have this leaf, which cuts you some. So you have a leaf through a point, and uh, pretty much the same. So it defines the partition into this hyper surfaces in D. Okay. Yeah, so basically the idea is that. Um, you take uh, f uh, at a given smooth point. You, you take f and you take the tangent directions to this hybrid surface, and uh, so they generate uh, they generate the whole tangent space. So therefore, uh, f restricts to a dimension one foliation on D. But when you say by algebraic curves, you mean that the leaves of this foliation are algebraic? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the meaning of the definition. So the restrictive foliation is algebraically integrable and of co-dimension one. So uh, a well-known result by John Olo says that, um, so if we count the, say the number of uh, invariant hybrid surfaces, and it turns out that there are infinitely many of those, uh, then in fact, uh, the foliation itself is algebraically integrable. So, in other words, um, there is a dominant rational map onto a curve, and this um, 
in these hybrid surfaces are just um, the components, irreducible components of the fibers. Can I just ask you a question? Sorry, uh, so sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. So, uh, so Bokumalo has this uh, recent paper where he more or less proved that if you have a, a, a together with some other people, if you mm -hmm. have a variety, you have a, an infinite collection of disjoint devices, yeah. then you can put them in a family. You can put them in a, I mean, there is a map to a curve such that they, they all belong to the family. Oh, yeah, so I know. Generalizing this. Uh, well, to some extent, but Bogomolov has to, well, he does not assume uh, the existence of foliation, but uh, he, I mean, the condition that they are non-intersecting non yes. is crucial yes. in his result. And here, they might a priori intersect. Uh, because the closures are okay, Yeah, so in a, at a singular locus, you have, there may be two, in, um, right. two invariant hypersurfaces, uh, two separatrices uh, uh, through a singular point. Um, a more recent result by Pereira and Spicer uh, said that um, also pretty much the same holds for uh, quasi-invariant hypersurfaces. Uh, so if the number of these hypersurfaces is infinite, actually if it is larger than some explicit um, number defined in, in terms of invariants of, of x only, uh, then f is, uh, is a pullback of a foliation on a surface. So basically, informally speaking, it says that those algebraically integrable foliations can be reorganized to, to a single foliation, um, to, not, not, not to a single foliation, but to a, um, to, to a map, to give a map from X to a lower dimensional variety, in fact, to a surface. So we, uh, there's also, uh, for any foliation, we can uh, define the so-called algebraic rank. Uh, so uh, it defined um, using the, uh, the algebraic reduction of a foliation. So in this way, uh, so the algebraic reduction is uh, the following. Uh, for any uh, co-dimension one foliation on a variety X, uh, there exists a pair Y and G defined up to a suitable birational equivalence and a dominant rational map uh, here such that uh, the f the f pullback of g is f um, uh, such that yes i mean every every foliation um, for every foliation, um, there is such a pair. Uh, so if it is, uh, say, purely transcendental, uh, so if, it, if there is, uh, uh, through a general point, if there is no uh, algebraic sub-variety passing um, attention to the foliation, um, then it's called purely transcendental. If this map can be just taken to be identity. Uh, but if, if through every point, every general point, uh, there is a, some sub-variety, uh, we can use the reduction theory to give such a map. So in fact, the foliation comes from here. And the fibers of this map are tangent to, to F. So is the algebraic rank the dimension of fibers? Yeah, exactly. Well, so let us go back to the proof. So we assume. So I just asked about theorem one. Uh, sorry. Which part was theorem one? Uh, yeah, theorem one was. Um, yeah. Ah. So the result which I announced. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so we still suppose that X is of general type. Uh, so we need to. And let's also assume that. Um, the foliation is pulled back from the surface, then up to a certain birational equivalence uh, is just induced by a holomorphic map onto a surface. Uh, so we use the easy addition formula for the numerical dimension. Uh, here, um, kx prime. So we, uh, we work on x prime. Sorry. Uh, so the numerical dimension 
is bounded in terms of the numerical dimension on a general fiber plus the dimension of the base. And therefore, so kx uh, restricted to a generic curve is, is positive. Uh, but uh, since a kf is pulled back from its surface, it's numerically trivial on fibers. And uh, so kx restricted to f is just uh, numerically equivalent to um, the conormal restricted to f. Uh, so therefore, the conormal has to be positive on fibers. However, the next proposition says that it cannot happen. Uh, so one more definition from Fallation theory is that of uh, the bot connection. Uh, so we have a foliation uh, and uh, we have a projection uh, to the normal bundle. We have locally on an open subset, uh, we can see the local sections of the, uh, of the normal bundle and of the tangent bundle, uh, and uh, also a section of F over U, uh, which are, well, one section is mapped to the other one. Uh, and we define uh, the bot connection locally um, as the way to um, somehow, as P of the commutator. So we take the commutator and take its image um, in, the, in the normal bundle. Uh, so it's easy to um, check that this is well defined. This defines an OX linear morphism in the variable V. Uh, and this satisfies the Leibniz rule. So it's, it's a connection, a so-called partial connection. So it's connection um, on, um, defined along those uh, directions which tend into F. And th this is a connection on the, on the normal bundle. Uh, the most important property of the bot connection is that uh, what is som sometimes called uh, the flatness along the leaves. Uh, so if we have a sub-variety uh, sitting in the leaf, uh, which does not intersect the singular locus, then the bot connection pulls back to give a flat holomorphic connection on the pulled back uh, bundle. So therefore, um, the pulled back bundle has vanished in turn classes. So in the previous, uh, I mean, the call normal has to be positive, um, but by, by this proposition, it has also to be flat, which is impossible. So what is W? Uh, so how do you apply this thing? So what would W be? Uh, uh, a general fiber. And it is a non-singular curve. Why is it joined from a singular locus? Because the singular locus has co-dimension at least two. And the fiber has? So what, 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 sorry, W was the fiber of what? Of the reduction? Of the reduction map. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's a curve. Okay, I see. It's a movable curve, which, yeah, does not interesting. So, uh, let me say a couple of words uh, about foliation singularities. Um, so, how much time do I have? <coughs> uh, well, we started a bit late, so maybe about 20 minutes. Ah, uh, 20 minutes, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so um, uh, the foliation singularities can be defined in pretty much the same way as singularities um, or variety or a pair. So we have a birational morphism from Y to X, and we uh, pull back a foliation, uh, pull back a foliation F to a foliation G on Y. So we can write the formula for the canonical class, and uh, we also have uh, the discrepancies. Uh, just you know, like in birational geometry for varieties. Um, and the, uh, the most important notion is that of canonical singularities foliations. Um, so it's defined in the same way as birational geometry. So all discrepancies for all birational morphisms uh, have to be non negative. Uh, so, in other words, uh, when we uh, have a birational map and we pull back the foliation, so the induced uh, the the canonical of the induced foliation uh, is the pullback from downstairs plus something effective, and therefore we can control say the numerical dimension of KF. And also uh, the notion of non-critical singularities um, is also quite important. Uh, 
So the singularities of a foliation are called non-decritical if uh, through every point of x there is only a finitely only finitely many f invariant hypersurfaces. So uh, through a non-singular uh, point, uh, there is um, there is a unique leaf, uh, but at, at singular points um, we can have several. I mean, uh, f invariant hypersurfaces. I mean, locally, this is important, uh, not necessarily globally. Uh, so, for example, the, the critical singularities appear if we take something. This is our foliation, and we take something which is transverse, and we contract it. So there are inf infinitely many. So there are infinitely many leaves through a subvariety, uh, and therefore there are infinitely many uh, leaves through a point downstairs. Can I ask you the question? So if f is smooth in the sense of it's a regular foliation, yeah, is then is it then canonical in this sense? Yes, it is canonical, but it is not completely obvious, so you have to do something. Okay. And you think and it is so you call singularities of F are really the blockers with the F is not, not a bundle? Is this a sub-bundle? Is this the point? Yes, yes. So, really so yeah, the singular sub-scheme of a foliation is um, the locus of, of those points such that um, F is a not, not a sub-bundle of, uh, of the tangent bundle. Well, uh, so the resolution of uh, singularities in foliation theory, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's quite a difficult problem, so we don't have an um, analog of Hironaka for any dimension. Uh, what we do have is, um, of course, the result, uh, the reduction of singularities um, for foliation on a surface. This is a theorem of uh, Benningson and Zeidenberg. And, uh, it, uh, the theorem was extended uh, by Kana uh, to rank two foliations on three folds. So by um, say doing finitely many blow-ups uh, in f invariant centers, uh, we can achieve a birational model such that the singularities upstairs are canonical, a canonical and non-critical. Uh, actually, uh, in the threefold case, we can write down in local formal coordinates, this uh, the defining one uh, the defining one forms in a pretty explicit way. Uh, so, so what I would like to so uh, I've introduced all these definitions in order to do the MMP for for KF. So. Um, so people basically think that um, for foliations, uh, the minimal model program should be also available in pretty much the same way as um, as it is for for varieties, but with, with certain complications. So we have a mildly singular variety. So for example, smooth. Um, uh, we can concentrate on three-dimensional case. Um, and if we have a co-dimensional affiliation, uh, then uh, the MMP is uh, a sequence of uh, contractions to some varieties X prime and also um, and the induced foliations F prime and so on, uh, such that um, this, uh, the sequence of contractions satisfies certain additional properties. So we stay in the mildly singular, in the category of mildly singular varieties. Well, I will make it more precise, just in a minute. Uh, all foliations uh, in this picture have canonical and non-decritical singularities. So this means, um, so the third condition is that only the curved tangent to foliations are contracted. So this is crucial, um, actually, and so without the third condition, so if we contract something which is transverse, we definitely de destroy the singular, uh, singular locus. Mm -hmm. So singularities will no longer be canonical and non-decritical. Um, and uh, so we, we arrive to, um, to a model uh, where uh, the canonical of the foliation is an F. So for um, 
for foliation on a surface, uh, we know MMP uh, pretty much in full generality. That means we can always uh, by sequence of, so either foliation is algebraically integrable or there is, we can contract some um, minus one curves and some um, Hertzberg Hung strings to to get a surface with Duval singularities and um, the foliation on the surface with Neff canonical class. So when it comes to three folds, we do not have um, a complete MMP um, at the moment, despite a huge progress made by Spicer in his thesis, and also there is a, a more recent work by Cassini and Spicer, uh, when they prove many things, uh, well, almost all MMP except uh, termination of foliated flips. Uh, well, they cannot uh, do this in full generality. Uh, but we are going to need only uh, a part of this work. Uh, so we assume that KF is pseudo effective. If, if X is of general type, this is always the case. Uh, then uh, what Spicer proved uh, was that there exists, uh, there exists finitely many hypersurfaces in X. Uh, such that um, they are either invariant or quasi-invariant, and they contain all curves from divisorial KF extremal rays. And we can contract them the same in the category of uh, KLT varieties. So if um, actually, if, if, um, if the curves in the extremal ray uh, cover uh, an invariant divisor, then it's actually KF uh, it can be shown that it's KF negative, uh, so the contraction uh, j just uh, comes from MMP for KX. Uh, but if it is quasi invariant, uh, we have to we have to take a divisor of the form uh, KX plus D, uh, probably with some coefficient T, uh, where D is uh, D is covered by. Okay, if negative curves. So the the bottom line is that we can achieve uh, the so-called minimal model program in dimension one. Uh, so just by induction, if if there is uh, such a hypersurface, uh, which is uh, KF. Uh, which is swept up by KF negative curves, uh, then uh, we can contract it, and uh, my induction hypothesis were done. Uh, but uh, otherwise, we can assume that a KF is modified NEF. So the, let me remind you that the modified NEF cone is uh, the cone of R divisors uh, that is generated by um, the push forwards uh, from all possible birational models of um, ample divisors. It can equivalently be defined um, using the divisorial Zariski decomposition. So for any CD effective class, you have a decomposition uh, into positive part, uh, which is uh, uh, modified NEF, and uh, the negative part, uh, which is effective, So uh, the numerical dimension of a pseudo-effective divisor can be defined in many equivalent ways. Uh, the one is uh, where the perturbed growth condition, so we take the, if it is an R divisor, we take the, um, uh, the lower part and um, approximate, approximate it by some, uh, so add a small multiple of uh, sufficiently ample divisor. And uh, it can be this definition does not um, d depend on epsilon sufficiently small and on A. So equivalently, we can define the numerical dimension via a divisorial Zariski decomposition. So we have uh, something which is um, nothing or dimension one. Uh, we can just de define um, the numerical di dimension in the same way as it is for NF divisors. 
so uh, so okay uh, so one more uh, definition from the foliation theory which we are going to use is uh, is the Bombard formula so it works only on smooth varieties but anyway it just um, uh, will give you some some understanding of um, of this uh, this numerical invariants which are going to appear just in a moment. So uh, the second term, the first term class squared of the normal bundle uh, uh, concentrates on the singular locus. So uh, W is a, is a component of the singular locus of F, um, which is of course I mentioned ex exactly two. Uh, so these are some real coefficients. Uh, BB of F uh, W. So these are called uh, the Bombot residues. Uh, and it's defined, it, it can be def defined locally, uh, so at a general point of this component, W, you take a small three sphere and you take a local smooth representative of the normal bundle and you integrate. So it's a residue type integra integral. So, uh, I mean, overall philosophy is that um, by, um, by Frobenius the theorem and by flatness of, of the bot connection, uh, the, the chain classes of the normal bundle concentrate uh, on the singular locus. So let me just uh, be very brief and sketch the, indu uh, the, the induction step. So we take an ample divisor and we just have uh, take kx uh, plus h and uh, expand it. Uh, and we want to relate these intersection numbers uh, to those of uh, restricted foliation. And uh, uh, the following uh, proposition by Rojo and Reel uh, tells us that uh, so the canormal bundle, when we restrict to general ample divisors, the canormal bundle behaves uh, very well. Uh, so, um, a priori, if we restrict to something of codimension dimension one, uh, there might be some additional uh, exceptional divisor. But it does not appear uh, if uh, the hypersurface is general enough in a base point free linear system. So, the, the, uh, the junction formula is um, the same as for, um, as for just for Kx. So we can re rewrite this formula in terms of invariance of a restricted foliation. Uh, well, and we are going to look at both, both sides of this formula um, as uh, certain functions on the modified Neff cone. So, so we can, if we have a, something pulled, by, uh, pulled uh, sorry, pushed forward from a birational model, so we can lift everything uh, and just uh, restrict to an ample divisor upstairs. Um, since KF is Neff in codimension one, uh, the intersection numbers uh, which involve KF only, they are bounded in terms of numerical dimension of, of KF. And those terms uh, which involve the conormal of the restricted foliation, they can be estimated. The, the intersection numbers um, are related by certain formulas um, with the local invariance of the, of the restricted foliation. Um, so one instance is, is the bound mode formula, uh, but also Kf times n star of f uh, can also be interpreted in the same way. So if x of general type, then by positivity of the left-hand side, it follows that uh, the right-hand side has to be also uh, very positive on uh, certain ample divisors. So we can, in fact, uh, after some computations, uh, we can find uh, some ample divisor on the modification such that uh, the two intersection numbers are positive. So uh, uh, n squared is positive, and m is also non-negative on some ample divisor. And we simply use riemann roch uh, to see that, uh, I mean, this condition uh, shows you that either n, f, or n star of f uh, has to be big. Uh, but this condition shows exactly that um, and star of f is pseudo effective. And if it is pseudo effective and big, uh, this is a contradiction. Uh, because, well, again, 
we can pass a minimal resolution, and by Bogomolov's Somaza theorem, uh, we, we cannot have a big normal bundle. So that's pretty much how it's handled. So I think I'm going to stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Alexei, for the talk. Any questions at all? I don't. I just don't get in the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, uh, I think I understand the induction step. So you all said it's induction on the picker rank, right? Oh, yeah. So. Uh, so if we have a, a surface which is covered by KF negative curves, yes. then you can contract it. Yes. And the Picard rank drops. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you contract it, um, and then you. Um, so there are finitely many contractions, uh, uh, such as uh, I, I mean. So in the end, you get this modified net. So you can assume it's modified net. Isn't yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Then, so that's why you, ah, the, the whole thing about variational geometry uh, uh, comes into the picture. Why? Why, why was it induction? I don't, I don't understand. Isn't this by, the, by this result of Spicer? You said that it's just lens or, or on a modified net, and then you use your thing. So what was the induction? That's what I didn't understand. Um, well, uh, you, you have a variety, you have a foliation, and you look at KF. Mm -hmm. If it is, uh, if there is such a divisor which covered by KF's negative curve, then you contract it, and you're uh, in the lower Picard rank case. Okay. Uh, but if, if there are no such divisor, then you modify NEF and you argue. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. So I, I somehow, because you uh, argued at the beginning that like, Picard rank is 1, then you somehow immediately finish. But I didn't really realize what was now the relationship between the, the base of the induction and the. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have to do for rank 1, and then. Okay. And the second one. So this was just for. Uh, so what happens if the, if the, if the, the break rank is different? So the algebraic rank, so since uh, the foliation has a transcendental leaf, yeah. so it cannot be algebraically integrable, right? Yes. Absolutely. So um, the only possibility for algebraic rank is one. It's either one or zero. Yes. Either it is purely transcendental or it is pulled back from the surface. Purely transcendental? Sorry? What if it's purely, purely transcendental, what then? Yeah, then uh, the whole argument was about purely transcendental case. The argument for the algebraic rank one was given. Uh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Thing with um, with the vibration. Any other? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.